Hi and welcome to Surrey TV. I'm Ben Wells. And I'm Hayley Evans. And we're here at the Watts Gallery in Compton. Some very exciting galleries to look at. I can't wait to see this special exhibition either. Right, let's go and have a look. And I'm really pleased to say that I've just been joined by Perdita Hunt, the gallery director. Perdita, thank you very much for letting us have a look around today. I'm delighted that you're here. And I'm delighted that you're here, because if you'd seen our story three weeks ago, Perdita has just swum the Solent for fundraising purposes. And what were you fundraising for? I was actually trying to save, raise money to unlock a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund to save Watts' house and studio, which is across the lane from here. And if we can save it, we'll complete an artist's village of a gallery, a pottery, a chapel and his house. A huge congratulations for doing that and we're here in a special exhibition here at the Watts Gallery, the Ellen Terry Painters Actress Exhibition. Could you tell us more about that? Well Ellen Terry was Watts's first wife and she was a brilliant actress. You could compare her probably to Judi Dench today in the 19th century. She was probably the most photographed actress after Queen Victoria and she inspired a number of artists. Sergeant George Frederick Watts, her husband, Graham Robertson, Burne Jones, for the first time we brought together the paintings, drawings, films featuring her and even you can listen to her voice which is inspirational and we're even showing her divorce papers with Watts because Watts went on to marry Mary Seaton Watts who built the chapel. So last chance to see because it ends on the 9th of November. Right, a real opportunity so make sure you get down here before the 9th of November. Perdita, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming. Southern Rail clinched two first prizes and four highly commended awards at the prestigious National Rail Awards earlier this month. Southern Rail's wins were in Putting Passengers First and Outstanding Personal Contribution categories. In Putting Passengers First category, the company's new smart card, The Key, blew away the competition in this fiercely contested category with the joint entry with Cubic Transportation Systems. Always developing, The Key has achieved industry first after industry first and most notably the integration of The Key smart card system with London's Oyster Readers. In the outstanding personal contribution category, the award was won jointly by Southern Rail Neighbourhood Officer Matt Lenton and Southern Train Carer Peter Harding. Visit southernrailway.com for more information and to register for your key. The register button is on the lower right hand side of the home screen. Lightbox Gallery reached the final six out of 800 nominations in the Telegraph Family Friendly Museum Awards for 2014. The six shortlisted museums were visited secretly by undercover family judges. The families measured the museums against the Kids in Museums Manifesto, which has been compiled entirely from visitors' comments and consists of 20 ways to make a museum family friendly. The Telegraph article described the light box as a unique addition to the list, saying the light box is a stunning building, it engages directly with its community, inspires creativity for all ages and abilities and has a brilliant young curators programme. If you haven't been to the Lightbox recently, it's always worth a visit. Aside from the variety of exhibitions and activities available throughout the year, it's free. Fantastic. <laughs> so go to thelightbox.org.uk to find out more. The new website is bright and easy to navigate. Our friends at Birdworld near Farnham are celebrating a very happy emu called Forest. Forrest was rescued from some horrible conditions at an animal park in Scotland and was brought to Surrey for rehabilitation, proper care and attention, but most importantly, an open space to live in. And after seven months of care, diet correction and familiarity training from the dedicated team at Birdworld, Forrest is now a very happy emu with his own paddock area and two female companions of the 26-acre Surrey Park. We had the pleasure of recording at Birdwild at the end of August and we highly recommend this venue, not only for the animals that live there, but to meet the dedicated team that makes this a very special destination to visit. More information, opening times and events coming up, including the Halloween Grotto, can be found at birdworld.co.uk. And we have another competition for you. If you've always wanted to present, like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter so you can send us a direct message. We'll invite the most creative application to come down to Birdworld and interview Forrest. And his keepers, of course. <laughs> and we'll record the interview and show it on Surrey TV at the start of November. 
We have many unique things happening in Surrey, and this weekend is no exception. Surbiton Ski Sunday and the Seething Luge will take place this Sunday on the 19th of October. Yes, skiing and luge in Surrey in October. Strap some ice to your feet and make your charge along the St Mark's Hill course from 11am to 1pm. Last year's gold medal winner completed the course in less than 10 seconds. So this year's competition, although primarily based on having fun, will be hotly contested. Now after the challenge, everyone will decamp for the King Soup in Claremont Gardens off Maple Road in Surbiton. The community made soup is a huge social event with bands and other entertainment to enjoy. Now please bring a potato or a leek or both to make your contribution to the cooking of everyone's après ski warming lunch. More details can be found at seethingwells.org. Another end of season event this weekend is Transport Fest at the London Bus Museum in Weybridge on Sunday the 19th. Now this year's theme is World War One, and the museum has organised an unprecedented lineup of period vehicles to display around the museum at Brooklands. Historically a feast for the eyes and photographically this day no matter what the weather will offer you the chance to capture some unique images. Due to engineering works this weekend, there'll be no train services to Weybridge, so the museum's 462 bus service will meet the railway replacement buses at Weybridge Station. There'll also be extra services in the morning and late afternoon to and from Leatherhead Station as well. The day starts at 10am and concludes at 5pm. More information is available at londonbusmuseum.com. The Guildford Book Festival also concludes this weekend, with events happening all day today, Friday, and more on Saturday and then Sunday afternoon at various locations around the town, this year's festival has been a great success, with many celebrity guests and prestigious authors in attendance. If you're in Guildford today or over the weekend, visit guildfordbookfestival.co.uk and click on the Events tab to find out what's happening on the day of your visit. has a new play that will thrill youngsters at the end of the month. If you or your children are fans of the Gruffalo or How to Train Your Dragon, then pencil in the 20th or the 21st of October, the latest stage play based on the much-loved book by Krista Cow. Now Emily Brown and The Thing will be performed at the theatre with performances at 10.30 and 4.30 on both days. Described by The Guardian as a small but ingenious pleasure and The New York Times as an engrossing, irreverently funny, melodic and exceptionally well acted pleasure, this play is sure to be a hit. Go to camelytheatre.biz for more information or call 01276 707 600 to book your seats for these four exclusive performances. So while we've been tinkering around in the shop, look who I've bumped into. This is Lisa Quay, um, singer-songwriter of Surrey. Now, we missed you at the uh, Riverhouse Barn. Can you yes. tell us how that went? It was a fantastic night. I was very sad that Stephen wasn't there, but however, it was a brilliant night. Uh, lots of new fans, sold a load of albums, and it was actually quite emotional, so it was a great night. Brilliant, and have you got any other gigs coming up? Um, we've got a nice little showcase coming up in London, actually, so if any of the Surrey uh, fans want to travel up, um, it's only in Camden, but it's at Proud Camden on November the 2nd, and we're on stage at about 7 o'clock, so that's the next thing for us. So you've got some really exciting news for us about maybe working together. Would you like to elaborate a little bit? Yes, we've been chatting for some time now about working together um, and we're going to look at launching a Surrey TV music channel um, which will also feature uh, very interesting interviews, um, some tips for songwriters and introducing venues to talent and vice versa. So really looking forward to getting our teeth into this. That sounds great. I'm really looking forward to working with you. I'm so glad that we bumped into you today. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Just a reminder that tomorrow night, Saturday the 18th, is Kickback Comedy Night at the Boiler Room in Guildford. This month's acts include Rodri Reese, Latif Lovejoy, Fern Brady and Kate Smirthwaite on MC duties on Saturday. There are still some tickets available, so head to kickbackcomedy.com to reserve your seat at this great night out. I'll be there, so make sure you come and say hi. 
We've had a lovely time here today at the Watts Gallery. It's absolutely gorgeous, so make sure you come down and visit and mention Surrey TV while you're here. Definitely. Right, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Have fun and enjoy the county. Bye-bye.